On the other side of the picture, the nasty people, they, on their side, consider that they really are the best and uh, nurture their collective ego by blasting the bourgeoisie, the squares, the wasps, the know-nothings, or whoever they may be. And so, for the collective ego of the non-squares, the squares are extremely necessary. If they were to disappear tomorrow, uh, many of us would lose a cause. <laughs> now, the minute you begin to become aware of this, uh, it's rather embarrassing. It's, of course, humorous, and I'm glad that you see this. Uh, because at once you begin to realize how much you depend on an enemy or an outsider or a group of damned people as distinct from your own group of saved people. And so you begin to realize that if your collective ego or yourself depends on your being on the in, it, but you can only be on the in with relation to something that is out. And since the in and the out are inseparable if there is to be any in or any out, you suddenly discover that yourself is bigger than you thought it was. It uh, includes the other. And you can't do without it. You, this brings about a fundamental change in the understanding of the meaning and nature of self. And thereupon, there become uh, a change of attitude to other people, even if you continue with some formal opposition to them and disapproval of them. <coughs> when, then, you are honestly clear with yourself what you like and what you dislike, and then, at the same time, yourself begins more and more to include things that were hitherto defined as being not yourself. Your love, which is what you are, begins to express itself quite naturally and unaffectedly in a wider way. Now, to trust oneself to be capable of love, to bring up love, in other words, to uh, function, in a sociable way and in a creative way is to take a risk. It's a gamble. Because you may not come through with it. And in the same way when you fall in love with somebody else or you form an association with somebody else and you trust them, they may, as a matter of fact, not fulfill your expectations. But that risk has to be taken. The alternative to taking that risk is much worse than trusting and being deceived. In other words, to live together, you have to take risks. There will be disappointments and failures and disasters as a result of taking these risks, but in the long run it will work out. My point is that if you don't take them, the results will be so much worse than any kind of wild anarchy that could be conceived. You see, here we are now as a highly disciplined human race with all kinds of rules and religions and uh, what are we about to do? Blow ourselves completely to pieces. Uh, is this, was this all a good gamble? Because, you see, in tying up love in knots and becoming capab incapable of it, you can't destroy this energy. You turn it, uh, when, you when you won't love and you won't let it out, the thing comes out in the form of self-destruction. The alternative to self-love, in other words, is self-destruction. Because you won't take the risk <coughs> of loving yourself properly, you will be compelled instead to destroy yourself. Because, you see, in tying up love in knots and becoming capable, incapable of it, you can't destroy this energy. You turn it, uh, when, you would, when you won't love and you won't let it out, the thing comes out in the form of self-destruction. The alternative to self-love, in other words, is self-destruction. Because you won't take the risk of loving yourself properly, 
you will be compelled instead to destroy yourself. So, which would you rather have? Would you rather have a human race which isn't always very well controlled and sometimes uh, runs amuck a little bit, but on the whole continues to exist with a good deal of honesty and uh, delight when delight is available? Or would you rather have the whole human race blown to pieces and cleaned off the planet, reducing the whole thing to a nice scoured rock with no dirty disease on it called life? But I repeat the point that is necessary to understand this whole thing, that love is a spectrum. There is not, as it were, nice love and nasty love, spiritual love and material love, uh, mature affection on the one hand and infatuation on the other. These are all forms of the same energy. And you have to take it and let it grow where you find it. If you find that only one of these forms exists in you, if at least you will water it, uh, the, the, the rest of the plant will blossom as well. But the essential prerequisite from the beginning is to let it have its way. <laughs>